Time now is eight minutes past six. We're going to be taking you to Blackpool very shortly, where Hannah is. We're taking a look at the latest round of so-called levelling up funding, which is going to areas that we understand the um, majority of which are conservative, but... Um, more than those that which returned Labour MPs in the last election. Yes, Michael Gove is set to make those uh, announcements uh, and uh, appear on this programme a little later on this morning, live with us, indeed, with Hannah, who is in Blackpool uh, this morning. Very good morning to you, Hannah. There are significant sums involved in these announcements linked to levelling up. Tell us more. Morning, Charlie and Naga. Yes, this is money that councils had to bid for back in order in August and we're finding out today who has won which projects will get the funding that they were hoping for. Blackpool of course is one of those places that is often mentioned when we talk about levelling up and one of the places that the government has said is a priority. If we look at some of the projects that we know are now going to get money, one of the biggest ones is in Morecambe just up the road from here. There's £50 million confirmed for Eden Project North. Here in Blackpool it's £40 million for what's being called a multiversity that's a new education campus the prime minister's constituency in north yorkshire is also getting 19 million pounds that's for the renovation of catterick town center and there's announcement of more money as well for various transport projects all across the country all across all the regions and all of the nations i've been speaking to people here in blackpool about whether they think this money will really do what they need right now. Blackpool, a town with a proud history, now promised transformational change as the government announces the latest list of places to get money for projects that it claims will spread opportunity more equally. No, I think it's like but at this warm hub, where last night around 100 families turned up for a hot meal and some company, Many feel the rising cost of living is already having an impact on their children. Michelle's a nurse with two daughters. Reading books that I would love to be able to go out and buy them, you know, to be able to do it and you can't afford to do it anymore. And with everything being on iPads, I can't afford to go out and just buy them a new iPad or a new computer. So it's just things like that that we all need, but you can't get to it anymore. Do you trust that the government will make areas like this better and improve chances for your daughters? Um, not at the moment, I don't know, to be honest. We're struggling to buy the shopping, to buy new shoes when we need it, because kids go through shoes like mad. Um, we can't do evenings out, we can't even go to like play centres and stuff because it's just too expensive. Nine-year-old Jack is all too aware of the impact of rising bills. What have you got here then? Um, I made a mind map about things to save money. For stuff like um, heavy eating on less often, you, you can have stuff like extra blankets and hot water bottles, and you can walk instead of taking the bus, and you can bulk cook to save money as well. And six-year-old Cole is clear what would make his life better. It would be better if it, things would get cheaper. Then it's easier to get food in and we can eat and get drinks and we can drink. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Many here have little idea what levelling up means. Have you ever heard the phrase levelling up? Mm, no. I've not heard of levelling up. But the community trust that runs this hub say the new investment is welcome. I think we've seen an awful lot of support to areas um, in the past where we've almost looked and gone, don't forget about us up, 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 up north. And if this is a genuine uh, opportunity for that type of support to come, then we are at the north of the country. We are uh, where the, the need is. So let's level up and make sure the support is appropriate right across the country. Among the 100 projects getting funding are Eden Project North and rugby clubs across Northern Ireland. Cardiff gets money towards a new train line and there'll be a new ferry for one of Britain's most remote islands in the Shetlands. While campaigners say funding for better transport links will help, it won't solve long-standing issues. Too many passengers are seeing services cancelled at short notice or, or, or cancelled the night before and that affects their journey getting into work or places of education. What passengers want now 
there's much more uh, punctual, reliable services. Um, investment in the future is great, but today they want to see their rail services much more reliable, much more punctual. The government says there will be another round of funding still to come in the future, but many question whether the money announced today will really be enough to brighten their prospects. Well, I'm joined now by the leader of Blackpool Council, Lynn Williams. Morning to you. Good morning. Tell us more about this multiversity. What actually is it? Multiversity, I mean multi-ages, so it will enable, our, particularly our young people, but not just our young, um, at, you know, young and old, to enable them to um, attain those, you know, those skills, qualifications through, through life. So it'll be transformational for the town. What kind of timescale are we thinking about in terms of this? When, roughly, do you think it might be completed? What's your aim? It's, and it was going to take a number of years, but you know, this is you know, it's a key part of our our vision, our you know, plan for the town, um, and to enable us to do, you know, to deliver that strategic plan for the town. So, yeah, I mean, it's really pleasing news this morning. The government believes that, or has said that some of these funding projects will be transformational for towns. Is this enough to transform the future of Blackpool? A key part of our um, and the, and a focus priority of our discussions with the Leveling Up Partnership with Deal Up and Secretary of State has been around housing and we need to deliver on good quality homes for all of our people um, and, and, and of course unless you have properly funded public services there will never be any true levelling up. Blackpool has been adversely affected through the years of austerity, through Covid and now the cost of living crisis. So uh, you know local authorities like Blackpool, particularly, particularly Blackpool because we've been so adversely affected, you know we need that funding support from governments to have that long-term sustainable funding to deliver for our people. We heard there from people who live in Blackpool saying, you know, I can't afford to buy books for my children for school, being affected, as you say, by the cost of living crisis. Why should they care about this? Because this is part of a long term, you know, we, we have, you know, we've worked as a town, we've worked across the town with all of our agencies, partners, community sector to try and support people for the cost of living. This is a long term plan, um, you know, to regenerate the town, um, our vision, and it enables our people, particularly our young people, we have high levels of, of you know, employment in our young people, to obtain those skills. It enables us to work better with local businesses, um, employers and industries, so, and we can focus that learning and those skills on on those industries so you know new industries data um, you know even entertainment industry renewables so that our people our young people can take advantage of those opportunities have good decent jobs where they live Lynn Williams thank you very much for speaking to us this morning and we'll be speaking to Michael Gove in just about an hour or so and talking about some more of the projects across the whole of the country Hannah thanks very much see you later 8.33 the time now. Let's go back to one of our main stories this morning. Government revealing exactly where the latest round of so-called levelling up funding will be going, with Conservative areas getting more than those which returned Labour MPs in the last election. Hannah's in Blackpool for us this morning, which is receiving a boost. Let's find out more about this with Hannah. Good morning to you. Now, look, Hannah, full marks. It looks choppy. The water looks choppy behind you. It looks windy and it is bitterly cold. So full marks for being out there and telling us all about it. Thank you. Yeah, it really is. You definitely wouldn't want to be getting in that water anytime soon. It's really, really cold out here. Um, but let's talk about the money that's coming to Blackpool because it's one of the winners in this funding that's been announced today. The second time that the government has announced money from the levelling up fund. Blackpool and the North West in general have done pretty well this time round. That's not the case though when you look at how the, much of the funding is going to the North East or to Yorkshire. They're getting much less this time compared in particular to the southeast. If we run through some of the projects that are going to be getting some of the money, just up the road from here in Morecambe, there's £50 million for Eden Project North. And here in Blackpool, it's £40 million for what's being called a multiversity, an education campus that will help people get the skills they need, we're told, for the jobs of the future. One of the projects that has provoked quite a lot of attention is in the Prime Minister's own constituency 
constituency of Richmond. There's money for the regeneration of Catterick and there's also £650 million for transport projects all across the country. But I've been speaking to people here in Blackpool about whether the types of funding that we're hearing about today, these kind of projects, whether they're really addressing the issues that are on their mind at the moment. Blackpool, a town with a proud history, now promised transformational change as the government announces the latest list of places to get money for projects that it claims will spread opportunity more equally. No, I think it's but at this warm hub, where last night around 100 families turned up for a hot meal and some company, many feel the rising cost of living is already having an impact on their children. Michelle's a nurse with two daughters. Reading books that I would love to be able to go out and buy them, you know, to be able to do it, and you can't afford to do it anymore. And with everything being on iPads, I can't afford to go out and just buy them a new iPad or a new computer. So it's just things like that that we all need, but you can't get to it anymore. Do you trust that the government will make areas like this better and improve chances for your daughters? Um, not at the moment, I don't know, to be honest. We're struggling to buy the shopping, to buy new shoes when we need it, because kids go through shoes like mad. Um, we can't do evenings out, we can't even go to like play centres and stuff because it's just too expensive. Nine-year-old Jack is all too aware of the impact of rising bills. What have you got here then? Um, I made a mind map about things to save money. For stuff like um, heavy heating on this often, you, you can have stuff like extra blankets and hot water bottles, and you can walk instead of taking the bus, and you can bulk cook to save money as well. And six-year-old Cole is clear what would make his life better. It would be better if it, things would get cheaper. Then it's easier to get food in and we can eat and get drinks and we can drink. <laughs> Many here have little idea what levelling up means. Have you ever heard the phrase levelling up? Mm, no. I've not heard of levelling up. But the community trust that runs this hub say the new investment is welcome. I think we've seen an awful lot of support to areas um, in the past where we've almost looked and gone, don't forget about us up, 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 up north. And if this is a genuine uh, opportunity for that type of support to come, then we are at the north of the country. We are uh, where the, the need is. So let's level up and make sure the support is appropriate right across the country. Among the 100 projects getting funding are Eden Project North and rugby clubs across Northern Ireland. Cardiff gets money towards a new train line and there'll be a new ferry for one of Britain's most remote islands in the Shetlands. While campaigners say funding for better transport links will help, it won't solve long-standing issues. Too many passengers are seeing services cancelled at short notice or, or, or cancelled the night before and that affects their journey getting into work or places of education. What passengers want now is much more uh, punctual, reliable services. Um, investment in the future is great, but today they want to see their rail services much more reliable, much more punctual. The government says there will be another round of funding still to come in the future but many question whether the money announced today will really be enough to brighten their prospects. Now, when we spoke to the Secretary of State, Michael Gove, earlier, he did acknowledge the impact that the cost of living crisis could potentially have on some of the children that you heard from there and children across the country. But really, he's asking people to believe that these projects will make a difference in the long run. People have pointed out, though, that the Conservatives have now been in government for 13 years, and we don't even have a date for when this multiversity in Blackpool will necessarily be completed. It's also worth saying that the funding that's being announced today, councils have to bid for it. Many of them tell us that that in and of itself is an expensive, time-consuming process, and they have had their budgets 
cut quite significantly since the Conservatives came to power in 2010. So this really is a different way of doing things. The government deciding which projects it thinks will be the most beneficial. No one here in Blackpool is going to complain necessarily about the idea that they will get new facilities in the town centre at some point in the future. But there are definitely questions about whether this is really the kind of transformational investment that the government has promised. Hannah, thanks very much. With us in the studio now, Shadow Leveling Up Secretary Lisa Nandy. Uh, morning. Very good morning to you. Thank morning. you for coming in for us. So the evidence we've seen this morning from Hannah's reporting is we've got people in, uh, in there at Blackpool who are saying, A, they've never heard of levelling up. Your job. Your job. They've never heard of Hopefully what you do job. and what, what happens. On top of that, they're saying, we don't have, uh, we have, don't have money for basics. And then on the other hand, you've got the Leveling Up Secretary saying, here's a shiny bauble uh, that... Uh, that he's saying will help. Now, he's not wrong, is he? Look, we welcome any investment in the north and across the Midlands and parts of the country that have been starved of it for a very long time. My own constituency in Wigan has just got 20 million. But to put that in context, that's a fifth of the money that's been taken from us since Boris Johnson promised to level up in 2019. What we've got today are some short-term projects that in some parts of the country will are really, really welcome. But four out of five places are losers. Even the lo winners are losing because of the money that's been taken from well, us. Saying, what we need is long-term transformational which, change. Some of these projects are uh, like six, six form colleges, for example. The one we were looking at was a six form college. That's in perpetuity. That'll be, a, that'll be something that in time benefits those seeking education, therefore hopefully getting better jobs. That's part of a process, isn't it? But the point is it's a one-off pot of money that pits communities against one another, creates winners and losers. It's a Hunger Games-style competition that means that we only get small sums of money back in the that? short term. Sorry what we need is a long-term plan. When you say it's a Hunger growth. Games competition, let's explain this. It's just that local areas have to apply for the funding. That's not millions. Hunger Games, They've is it? They've spent millions on applying for this process. The latest uh, Freedom of Information Act request found that councils had handed over about 27 million to consultants just to go through this round of bidding. It's absolutely That's absurd. That's their choice. The fact is, though, you've got, to, you've got, you've got to prove no if you need the money. You've got. I mean, every area will say... We, need, we want to invest. That's the job of councils, but to invest in government should be partnering there. with those communities in order to deliver on their priorities, not ministers. Instead of these small pots of money with strings attached that are one-off, we need a long-term sustained approach from government. Look at hydrogen in Ellesmere Port. Look at the potential in the northeast around the growing film industry. There are really exciting things happening in every part of this country. And we need a government that gets behind that, that works with us for the long term, that hands over power and resources to allow us to deliver on our priorities, not theirs. Are you saying that if, if you were the levelling up secretary, not the, the shadow levelling up secretary, that you would not be creating the projects that are be being created now, which are clearly being asked for by those communities. Well, t take Blackpool, for example, where you've got this investment going into this um, university-style education and skills. Great news that you're going to invest in young people. But what about the wider economic picture? What about the plan to get good jobs back into communities like Blackpool and money back into people's pockets. What about thinking about taking former B&Bs that have been turned into HMOs, rundown accommodation in the private sector? What about working with pension fund investors to get that investment in to turn that into social housing and affordable housing and really start to kickstart the regeneration of the whole area? That's what we could achieve if we had a government that matched the ambition that you find in every community and every part of this so country. So if you're in power in the next election, if the Labour Party wins, what will you do with the pots of money that have been allocated now? Well, look, we want to end the competitive style bidding but process. But the ones that have been given out but, now. But and that's... But, yeah, no, no, we're not, we're not going to cancel projects that have already been awarded. This is our money and we deserve it back and we'll take any money that is on offer. But what we want to do is instead of these small one-off pots of money to a few places in the country where most people get absolutely nothing, we're going to ask councils and communities to draw up their own local economic growth strategies and we're going to partner with them to hand them the power and the tools to deliver it over transport, over skills, over housing, with the budgets to match. That's what we think. That's 
that's the way we think you can deliver real change in this country, by trusting people to be able to do it themselves. Can I ask you about whether you think there is a bias in the way that the money has been allocated between North and South and between the areas that most need it? Do you think that has been done fairly? It's really impossible to tell with this sort of process because it's so. But you've looked at where opaque. the money's going. Uh, the first round of funding was plagued by accusations of cronyism and favouritism. There's been a lot of speculation this morning about why Rishi Sunak's constituency is one of the big I, I, winners. I'd like your your opinion. You I, know where the money's going. What do you think? I, I think this is the wrong way to go about allocating funding because in the end, no, you, that's the that's the with respect, that's the answer you gave us before about how the funding sure. is done. I'm asking you whether, having seen where the money is going, whether you think something is fundamentally wrong with where the money is being spent. Not the process, yeah. not the politics behind it, just literally where the money is spent. When you look at it, yeah. do you think it's fair? No, I don't think it's fair. I think it's completely wrong that the North East, for example, is one of the biggest losers today when there's huge potential in the North East and also huge need. I don't think anyone looking at this process, Tory MPs who are up in arms today, lots of people around the country who lost out completely. I don't think anyone thinks that this system is fair. I also don't think anyone thinks this system is fit Why for purpose. Why would they have done it and if in we're this in government, way we'll if replace it's not it. fair? Are you saying there's a political motivation? There was, there was always a political motivation around levelling up. It was an election slogan. It was very much aimed at those key marginals that the Tories wanted to win. I think, in fairness to Michael Gove, I think he's come in and tried to sort some of that out. But the truth is that this is not the right way to allocate money, creating winners and losers around the country and ministers playing favourites with the projects that they like the look of rather than listening to local communities in every part of this country. Prime Minister's questions yesterday, one of the subjects that came up, you'll be aware, is uh, the former Chancellor, now Conservative Chair, Nadeem Zahawi's tax affairs. Mm -hmm. And there was a report in The Sun on Sunday claiming that he is going to be paying, or his representatives will be paying, a seven-figure sum to HMRC. Um, the, it's done and dusted. HMRC says it doesn't discuss tax affairs, uh, rightly so, you mm -hmm. would imagine. Why, are you, um, why is the Labour Party asking for um, more questions to be answered? He's paying back a bill. Well, we're just asking for some transparency about how this came about. Don't forget, at the moment, you've got people across this country who are really struggling to make ends meet. They're paying their fairer taxes, they're paying more taxes for working people than they ever have before. And he's we want to taxes. make sure that people play by the same rules. I but think he's that's, paying his taxes I think that's perfectly OK. We haven't called for him to be censured. We haven't jumped to conclusions. We just think that transparency in politics matters. But he said his representatives are paying... HMRC a certain sum of money, so the tax is being paid. But there is a genuine question about how it came about that, that a, a senior minister in a government wasn't paying the right share of taxes, and we're just simply asking questions about that. We want transparency and full disclosure. We intend to pursue that when we're in government, and we intend to legislate for that so that everybody is held to the same standard and that people across this country feel that there's a basic standard of fairness in how everybody is treated. Uh, Lisa Nandy, Shadow Secretary for Leveling Up. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us.